Right now, though, you might have heard us uh, following the story of around 5,000 people who were infected with hepatitis and in some cases HIV after receiving infected blood from the NHS. Now, one of those people is Joseph Peaty, and he's from Alsley, and he told BBC Coventry and Warwickshire his story earlier on this year. In the uh, mid-1970s, there was a fantastic new product that was uh, developed, and this um, had isolated this important protein, and they produced it in freeze-dried form in a little glass vial, and you just mixed it with some water and injected it. With development, uh, I, I was able to receive uh, a product very akin to just... Uh, factor 8 and because it was a very lucrative market when it first uh, was developed a lot of product um, was required now our, our government uh, didn't respond they, they, they were either short-sighted or you could say uh, they mismanaged this introduction of this new product mm -hmm. there was a high demand and they hadn't got the facilities in this country and they didn't develop them fast enough so that uh, they had to import a lot of treatment from America mm. and they didn't have as stringent controls over where that treatment came from so they, they sourced the blood that goes into making it from people like uh, convicts, uh, skid row donors, um, prostitutes, drug users and of course they pay them so they're going to keep coming back. The, the blood that was infected got into the treatment process and uh, I received hepatitis and um, then HIV through this treatment. Now, people like Joseph have campaigned for decades now to get some sort of recognition from the government. In October, Anne Milton, the Parliamentary uh, Undersecretary of the State for the Department of Health, announced a review of the support offered to people like Joseph. She promised results by the end of the year, and this week there was an announcement. We'll be hearing that, and we'll hear Joseph's reaction at around 9.30 this morning. Now, we've been following the story of Joseph Peaty from Olsley. Uh, Joseph was one of thousands of people back in the 70s and 80s who were infected with hepatitis and HIV after receiving contaminated blood from the NHS. Now, Annie Milton is the Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for the Department of Health. She promised a review into the support offered to those affected by the end of the year. This week, the Department of Health have issued the following statement from Anne Milton. On the 14th of October 2010, I issued a written ministerial statement announcing a review of aspects of support available to individuals infected with hepatitis C and or HIV by NHS supplied blood transfusions or blood products. In that statement, I said I expected to be able to report the outcome of this work and my intentions by the end of 2010. The review has been completed and submitted to ministers and I will update the House early in January when I publish the report. Well, let's speak to Joseph who joins us here on BBC Coventry in Warwickshire now. Joseph, good morning. Good morning, Molly. How do we find you this wintry Wednesday? Oh, I'm very well, thanks very much. And um, I've got to say a big thank you to the uh, to Intercare Support Agency. They've got their people out there this morning slipping and sliding around the, uh, the roads and they've done a brilliant job getting to me this morning to help me get ready for this. Brilliant. Now, on the 11th of October, you went to Parliament to hear a debate on on, on all of this. Uh, the promise of a review essentially came out of that. Uh, so you've been waiting. What's, what's your reaction? Well, as you can imagine, the community are very disappointed that um, the, the deadline that was originally promised to us um, has not been met. Uh, and after previous experiences of um, government promises that have been broken down the years, naturally everyone's uh, really quite depressed about the whole thing and very pessimistic that we're going to get the sort of government um, action that everybody had been looking forward to and really had been promised um, by the, the kind of um, the positive tones and the process that this coalition government uh, has been going through. Um, and as to uh, three call that you um, spoke to last week said um, it would really be quite a, an injustice and a really cruel uh, betrayal if this government, having gone through all this process, taken so much time to talk to us all, um, then really only came up with a token gesture, gesture or um, in fact fell in line with the, uh, the position of previous governments. Um, you know, it, it would be quite hypocritical 
really after being in opposition and criticising the Labour government for doing so little. Um, and they they knew of our economic situation when they took office and um, in the lead up to the election. So uh, they really can't have any economic excuse for not taking action. Um, so yeah, as Sue said, um, it would really be quite a, a betrayal, um, and worse because they've taken us through this process. Well, twenty five years on a quarter of a century. Uh, and, and you've had, as you've explained, lots of knockbacks in that time. And, and you say you're disappointed, of course, uh, by the recent delay. But how is your determination with previous knockbacks? You must have just dusted yourself on, uh, off, carried on, uh, carrying on for the cause. Is that how you feel now? Yes, it's disappointing. There's another wait. But is your determination still at full strength? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, people may have thought, because we've had so many knockbacks this year... Um, with the, the death of um, the former chairman, uh, Hayden Lewis, and then uh, just uh, last week um, or so, um, Gareth Lewis, who took up uh, the role as chairman um, after his death. Um, these, these have come as real blows to the community, but, I mean, the government can be absolutely assured that the determination within our community is such that if they don't address this fully, fairly and comprehensively, then this campaign will go on. There, there is so much um, support behind us. Well, we, we asked the Department of Health to, to shed some light on this delay for us. Uh, Joseph, this is what a spokesman had to say. Ministers are considering the review and will report back to the House as soon as possible after recess. We understand that people will be disappointed not to have a full announcement before Christmas, but we will publish the full review report in January. Joseph, just finally, because we, we have to go to the travel any second, but finally, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I understand um, them delaying it, and as I say, people are sceptical as to why they're delaying it. They're expecting bad news. Personally, um, I'm trying to remain optimistic that maybe what the delay is actually um, showing is that they're going to consider this seriously. They're going to organise and implement a comprehensive response in the new year that will meet our needs. If I'm wrong, then basically, as uh, we said before, it will be the cruelest betrayal and our, um, our campaign will go on. Well, Joseph Peaty, we will, from Aussie, we will keep up to date with you. We'll, we'll keep in communication. Uh, and hopefully next time we speak to you here on BBC Coventry in Warwickshire, uh, we'll have a joyous outcome. But we'll catch up with you shortly. But have a lovely Christmas, Joseph. And you, and um, I hope that Annie's feeling better too soon. Uh, she's lost her voice, bless her, which is no good for this job, but she'll be fine, fine fettle, uh, uh, probably next week, I should imagine. Oh, bless her. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye, Bye-bye.